everyone, Smooth Jazz. This time, guys, talk about stuff. It's Alex and, uh, and me, Kevin. <laughs> and me, Kevin. Yeah, McKevin. The, or- the artist known as me. Yeah, McKevin. And Changing today we're going to talk to you about the most jazz topic of all time. The Marvel, Marvel Cinematic, Cinematic <laughs> Universe. Um, oh God. So Marvel. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think a great place to start is uh, where it all began. I think we should. I, I feel like rather right. than doing just overall Marvel, we could do that another time. I think Marvel... The the movies to kind of do it like a, oh yeah yeah we're doing the Marvel Cinematic so we're talking about like the the main sure. stuff Disney's. but I want to even talk about some of the ones beforehand like Dolph Lundgren's Punisher <laughs> Nick Fury with David Hasselhoff uh, oh, all never, those terrible I Captain America movies I didn't see that Punisher it was Punisher, Electra Punisher War Zone oh think. okay so see I saw the one before that. Which was actually kind of good. I liked the one before the, that. With Thomas Jane. Yeah, that, that one. And John with John Travolta. Travolta. The bad <laughs> yeah. guy. It, it, it's an enjoyable watch. I'll put it at that. That's the one thing you'll hear with us talking about some of these movies. Some of these movies just purely and simply are just defined as watchable. Mm-hmm. And I can't say anything nicer or worse than that. It's just... You know, it's, it's it's a watchable movie. You can, it's it's watchable. It's just don't yeah. ever think it. You know. Yeah, it's it's like it's uh, only one way to put it. Yeah. Well, the Marvel Cinematic Universe starts. It all starts with Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Debuted the whole fucking universe, which was the Ozzy Osbourne classic came to life. <laughs> For real, yeah. Yeah, well, it's interesting though, because yeah, Black Sabbath. No, Ozzy liked the the comic books of Iron Man, so he's like, I'm gonna make a song about it. Mm-hmm. And then they made a song about it, and uh, Black Sabbath. Yeah, Iron Man. It's, I mean, that's pretty cool. And they even played the song in the credits of that one. I like the first Iron Man. I'm gonna. I always had a blast with that one. I, for yeah, I mean, a while, I always thought that was the best Marvel movie. It starts off with a really strong cast. I mean, it has Jeff Bridges Jeff is Bridges, great. Yeah, I mean, he's great in everything. Uh, and Robert Downey Jr. is great. Yeah, um, he's. I mean, he's. I let me put it this way: he's been like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, there's a lot of times where it's like. Uh, do I really want to see this? Oh, Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in. Uh, he's going to bring his A game. He'll be good. They just they like it's cool how they they pick the perfect actor to start it with because he's like the strongest act out of all of them probably. I mean, maybe not anymore. But I mean, they're all they're all like Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. is in it now. So like, yeah, acting wise, they're getting leveled out. With with the people that are in it, but like he was the longest, like heavy puller there. Oh yeah, for a while, like it was like who, who the hell are these other people? Yeah. It's like Robert Downey Jr. It's like, but then you sit there and it's like, what movie do you remember Robert Downey Jr. from? Like he he has name recognition, but outside of playing Iron Man, well, you remember him what from being in Back to School, which is a Rodney Dangerfield eighties mm-hmm. college movie, which is. Way funnier than it deserves to be, <laughs> because it, because everybody anyway. Yeah. But um, and then you have uh, him playing Charlie Chaplin in the nineties. It's like outside of that, what what do you remember him from? And I'm sure people could come up with some different things, and he's been in other stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, but that definitely put him on the map for sure. I mean, uh, it wasn't like Leonardo DiCaprio sign on. I mean, but, um, yeah. there was uh, Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if that was before or after that. I think it was after, right? Yeah, Sherlock Holmes was after the first Iron Man, and I do enjoy those. Although I like the first one more than the second one. Oh yeah, so he's good. Jude Law's also good too. So oh yeah. So we also suggest the Sherlock Holmes films. Yeah. <laughs> totally unrelated. They're, they're actually, no, they are Marvel, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Then the Everything next movie that came out was um, The Incredible Hulk with mm. Edward Norton as as Bruce Banner. Okay. That would have been awesome if he continued as that character. Not not discrediting uh, Mark Ruffalo or anything. But... I love Edward Norton as an actor. Yeah, he's I mean, he's Fight amazing. Club is one of my favorite movies. He's fantastic. Uh, there's I, one movie where he's like a serial killer or something like that. He gets put in jail. Oh, uh, Primal Fear. That one, yeah. That yep. one's a really good and movie. And I also like him in Moonrise Kingdom, which is completely different. That's a Wes Anderson uh, adventure comedy. Oh, yeah. Um, But, you know, Edward Norton, he's always really good. And honestly, that's the one thing I can say about the, what, 2009 Incredible 2000, Hulk movie? 2008. Okay, 2008 uh, Incredible Hulk is that uh, it, it it tried. There's yeah, some things yeah. it tried. It, it definitely wasn't like a uh, great... Tim Roth's the bad guy, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, let me... Uh... He, abomination, but like... Yeah, it is Tim Roth, who, who also is in a lot of really good movies. Oh, yeah, he's, he, he's in really a lot like, of great Tarantino yeah. movies. <laughs> Even just look at the Tarantino movies he's been in, Hateful Eight, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs. I mean, just right there, you could just go, holy crap. Liv Tyler was in it, too. Yeah. Uh, it was just so forgettable, was, if I could put anything it on it. It wasn't a great movie. Because I could not tell you the plot of that movie, if you It wasn't a great right movie. I can remember parts. I never watched... Uh, I, I think I watched it all the way through once. Yeah. But, yeah. But, I mean, Edward Norton's great and all that. I never thought of it being connected to the Marvel Universe, cinematic yeah. universe, in the way that it is. Because it is. That Edward Norton movie, believe it or not, is part of the same universe that Robert Downey Jr. is and stuff. They just switched the actor to Mark Ruffalo because Edward Norton didn't want to be Bruce Banner. He also wanted too much money to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that he didn't like the character. Well, that's why he wanted more money. Oh, yeah. He's like, I hate this job, but I'll do it for money. Yeah. Which, I guess all of us could say that about our job sometimes. So, can't take anything away from the man. (laughs) Moving on from there, I guess we should move to Iron Man 2, which came out 2010. Yeah, Iron Man 2... How do you feel it, about Iron Man 2? It it is kind of just more of the same of Iron Man 1. I wouldn't even say that. But it's not that. on the same level. Iron Man 1 was something special, right? Yeah. But Iron Man 2, like, don't get me wrong, Don Cheadle's a good actor and stuff. I just didn't like the two Iron Man aspect of it or something like that. They could have fell more into Iron Man being Iron Man type thing, and he's the guy, but, like, they needed a sidekick like I don't know if that was like some some power play move or something like that just to get other characters in there. I know that War Zone or War Machine. War Machine. I know that he is. <laughs> no, Punisher War Zone's a different yeah, movie. I know that he's like a. <laughs> he's. I never remembered him in the comics. So I mean, I didn't read a lot of Marvel comics and stuff. But See, like when you he, when you talk about Iron Man, you don't talk about Iron Man and War Zone. You talk about I mean, or War. War, War Machine, sorry. War Machine. Yeah, War Machine. No, I, in the old Iron Man cartoon show, which I don't re- know if you remember that show, um, it was pretty – I had fun with that as a kid, but um, he uh, he would have War Machine around sometimes, and he'd have like some other kind of like sidekicky kind of characters mm-hmm. around. But – It's like when he needed help, he just – Yeah, uh, but uh, – it. See, it also came out around the time the X Men cartoon show came out, so they kind of that want, one was pretty. That good. one was pretty good. Yeah. Um, and also the Spider Man one came out, but Spider Man always stayed to Spider Man, which was smart. Yeah, I like small that one scale. Too. See, and really here's good. here's where my biggest problem with Marvel comes up, and like the worst DC movies scale. And here's the thing: if you watch the first X Men movie. Scale wise, it's not that big of a movie. It's a pretty small scale movie. There's some big scenes in it, but the movie is very human. It's down to earth, and it's about these characters. That's one first. of my favorite it's ones. It's grounding, the yeah. Movie, yeah. Uh, it's grounding. It's intense, and it's in a small scale. Yeah, really it's, simple. It's like, not yeah. 
cannon in the sky, certain doom for the whole world. Because unless you fucking nail that, it's the dumbest premise ever. It's the kind of thing, like, I'd expect from, like, Roger Corman's crumpled scripts in the 70s, like, Invasionville, or, well, probably I would say, like, 50s. Because in the 50s, there were always been, like, alien invasion. Here's the invasion. It's coming to end of the world. But those always had their own vibe to it. Some of these Marvel movies, like, some of them are f- are really good. Yeah. And then some of them, I think, are less than stellar. First Iron Man movie gets a really good grade for me. I'd say really, really solid. Incredible Hulk... It's there. See, it's okay. See, at the time of that, it, you didn't feel like they were building up a universe. See, yeah, you, like you didn't think anything of it. It's only when you get to like Iron Man two and like Nick Fury and all this stuff. It's like, wait, what? And then well, all of a sudden, well, you're they, like, they they we won't get there yet. But there's right after this, there's Thor, then Captain America. Then you start to feel that they're starting to build something. Yeah, there. but Iron Man two, the, the Mickey Rourke, he's a great actor. But, but the the I don't know who like whoever wrote the script or like just that character did not fit him well. Yeah, and no, Iron like, Man two, I, the enemy in it I didn't really like that much. Yeah, I just remember the movie being kind of bland. And my biggest my biggest fault with the movie is they advertised over and over ACDC soundtrack, ACDC soundtrack, mm-hmm. ACDC music. Oh, it's gonna be ACDC, ACDC, ACDC. This, that, and the other thing. So. I, the, I was fucking pumped. Mm-hmm. I'm like, holy shit. It's going to be ACDC all up and down. They played three ACDC songs, and the rest was the most. And I hate to say this because I love orchestra music. But a lot of the orchestra music in these Marvel movies I find very boring, yeah. uninspired. And it's well, they just were there. just getting started with that. Yeah. But Phase at the one, same t- Marvel's really rough. Think about that, though. How many songs have. How many movies have three ACDC songs? Oh, not many because they're expensive. Exactly. Right? So so, yeah, and that is a good amount yeah, of ACDC. And I mean, cool. And 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 it was pretty cool when those scenes happen. But the movie was kind of lackluster because it was like, in the first one, you're compelled because Jeff Bridges is a fucking amazing yeah, actor, yeah. and you could give him a script about being a guy who goes bowling uh, with his friends and then gets caught up in something bigger than it. Yes, yes, that is the Big back. Lebowski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do know that, but it, the movie at, at its, I mean, that movie at its core is a movie about bowling and getting caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time. And trying to get your rug back. Yeah. Circumstances going a little fucked up. It's a simple movie, mm-hmm. but it's fucking awesome because of how funny it is and how well the act. It's just so well done, and that's the thing. Iron Man Two kind of feels bloated, like it's trying to be bigger than the first one, and that is kind of a problem with some of these Marvel movies. They try being way too big for their concepts. Yeah, like when we get to it, Ant Man. I think at least they acknowledge that it should be small scale because the character's fucking small scale. Yeah, yeah. And they do it right because of that. Yeah. And but just like looking here at like Iron Man two, Marvel really doesn't have their footing yet because these first few man, this Thor, but think the about d- this. amount of Dutch angles yeah. and Thor. We'll leave man. to Thor now, oh. but like, but think think about this. You get Iron Man one. You got Jeff Bridges. You got Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. Downey Jr. Oh, there's and a, uh, there's a couple well, other and, actors uh, in there. The Pepper. Uh, yeah, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, so it's a and then you got the Hulk there. with Tim Roth and Edward it, Norton. Yeah, you got. Then you got the next Iron Man with Mickey Rourke in there. Don Cheadle. You got these really A list actors, and then you go to Thor, and you get Anthony Hopkins. You get uh, Natalie Idris Portman. Il- uh, the Idris Elba. Yeah, Idris Elba. Natalie Portman. You got Natalie Portman. You uh, got um. The, the Loki, Norwegian, the Norwegian guy, Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's an amazing actor. He's, he's Danish. He's Danish. Though. Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. Okay. And I know that because him and Nicholas Finding Refn do a lot of stuff together because they're both from Denmark. Yeah, you got um, uh, Tom. You no, got the, Tom, the Norwegian guy. He scrolled through the old Norwegian. Tom the, 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 uh, Norwegian Nick Nolte. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, let me. I'll find it before. Stellan Skarsgård. Skarsgård, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think he, he, his kids, his one kid is the Pennywise from uh, the oh, yeah? movies. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and you got Tom Hiddleston and yeah. uh, Chris Hemsworth, which I I don't know what they were in before this, honestly. Chris Hemsworth, before that, he was in Star Trek as Captain Kirk's dad. That was who, before this. Yeah. Okay, that could have worked as something really good there. They could have, like, really... I think they might do something more with him in the next Star Trek, or they were going to. I don't know what's going on with the next Star Trek. I guess it's not going to happen. But we're not on the Star Treks. We're on the Marvels. Yeah, fucking um, Thor. So it gets you into Asgard, which is pretty crazy. Like, the CGI in that movie is pretty good. And then that shoots him back to Earth real quick, and he's on Earth the whole time. Thor's kind of cheesy, man. What the movie? Yeah, or, or not the, the not the Norse myth. The character. Oh yeah, it's totally cheesy. The, the movie is really cheesy. the whole movie is really cheesy. But but I mean, as a thought process, it's a fucking cool movie because it's, it's Thor. Yeah, it's uh, it falls under that it's decent category. It's just the amount of Dutch angles in that movie. It's like what did somebody watch Battlefield of the Earth and get us <laughs> the worst ideas? <laughs> They were yeah. like, Battlefield Earth was really good. What are you talking about? It had horrible effects and tons of Dutch angles, just like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay. Not well, much to talk about there. Um, yeah. yeah. Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh did uh, Thor, really? In Thor? He directed. Wow. Wait, he directed it? It looks like, yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, he did. That's crazy! Wow. And if I'm here. I'm here Kenneth, shitting on the first. If you Thor don't movie, know I'm who like... Kenneth Branagh is, it's the the teacher from Harry Potter from Harry too. Po- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now he also his Henry V is really good. He made a, a Hamlet. Oh a yeah, fellow. he's he's really he's, he's an made a lot, and he's a great actor. Yeah, too. he's an amazing uh, actor. Yeah. Um, I take back everything I said. It's the best movie. Uh, <laughs> it's the best Marvel movie. Thor's the best. <laughs> I didn't think it was a, that bad of a movie. I thought it was a good. Movie. No, I I would always say like it's fine, yeah. but like it's always crazy when you check out the Marvel movies on Rotten Tomatoes. All of them have like these sparkling reviews, and it's like they're not perfect. Now it also comes down to a lot of Marvel movies are fine, but if everybody says they're fine and they give that as a positive, Rotten Tomatoes is gonna be like, wow, it's got great scores. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're not taking the average score. So a lot of these, you check them on IMDb, and they're like a 6.6 or a 6.8 or something where they're like, okay, so it's a fine movie. But nobody's like, whoa, Iron Man 2, man. That's where they got it right. (laughs) You know, Thor doesn't really start it yet. Doesn't, like, start, initiate the whole thing yet. But the next movie, I feel, does. Captain America. Captain America, the first Avenger. I mean, it is in the the name. Okay, so here's the thing about Captain America, first Avenger. I really like the first half of this movie. Which you're right, And yeah. as soon as he gets powers, the movie goes downhill for me. Because a lot of the CGI stuff is really fucking hokey. And, like, the leg movement the first looked half like of the noodles. Movie, like, the first boom, half boom, of the boom, movie boom. is CGI with him, though. It's a big-ass it, head it on a little body. On a, on a smaller dude, yeah. It, no, that was good, but I'm just saying some of the other stuff. Good. Like, that looked weird. Uh, he, his movements are very noodly. Like, they don't – limbs do not move the way they move on Captain America in the first Avenger. They advance it a little, enhance yeah, it Yeah, and, bit, well, yeah. It, it just looks so fucking dumb to me. So, like, I've, I, haven't I remember coming time. out of the theater of that, like, I had some fun, but, like, some of that was dumb as shit. And, and, and I – that's kind of been how I feel about some of these where, like, I, yeah, I'm not a big fan of them just going, fuck it. Do it in post. We're gonna just CGI it. Fuck it. Yeah, that's you know? probably what they're doing. And, and to me, I, I pretty much always prefer practical. Like if you could do it in camera or some other way, do it that way because it's always gonna look better than CGI. Because I've never saw something in CGI and been like, "Wow, I'm so glad they didn't try to find another way to do this." And I do think there's a way to do an amazing balance. I think a great example is, and from around this time too, Prometheus. You want to talk about like special effects and stuff? Prometheus, when it uses CGI, it uses it where it absolutely has to, 
and it still looks better than any other CGI I've ever seen. Ridley Scott just has such a great eye that it always looks good. And I'm like, how does, and I've never understood that where like Ridley Scott's $90 million budgeted Prometheus looks 10,000 times better than Marvel's $250 million budgeted films. I just, it's like what Marvel's Korean animators aren't that good. Like what's, what's going on here, man? Like, I don't know. In don't light of all that, it does start the the whole uh, Infinity Stone aspect. Chase, when when the... is that Infinity Stone thing start? Is that with Avengers or? I was just that's what I just said. Captain America. Well, that's not Avengers though. It's the first Avenger. I just it, hit the microphone and we just spiked. <laughs> <laughs> you are not paying attention. I am paying attention. I'm also reading. So in Captain America, the first Avenger. But it's not the Avengers, though. No, I'm joking. They I have think. the first Infinity Stone in that, and that's how uh, Red Skull became Red Skull. He touched the, yeah. the stone, and it made him. Although, this is the most insane thing i ever seen. The Marvel Cinematic Universe did not have a movie come out in 2009. Whoa. Like... That's unheard of nowadays when, like, 18 Marvel movies come out a year. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I knew I noticed that when I was looking at the dates on these. Should have been <laughs> labeling the dates Captain America 2011. Yeah, yeah, Thor and Captain Thor. You feeling Thor. But Thor and Captain America were both 2011. Um, but Alex seems in- anxious to move on to... His well, no, favorite oh, movie oh, here, <laughs> the first okay, Avengers no, movie. Okay, this, this is where we're going to lose he's subscribers. Little, he's a little um, antsy here because... Uh, here's the thing. He doesn't believe it started right before that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me say this. I like the first Iron Man movie, and then the next Marvel movie that I would say I l- like legitimately really like is Captain America the Winter Soldier. <laughs> six years later. So, yes, I'm going to take some flack for this, but I don't think The Avengers is that good of a movie. I think it's okay. I think it's a little bit better than Captain America, First Avenger, Thor, Iron Man 2, and Incredible Hulk, but I think Iron Man's better than Avengers because Avengers tries to be this huge movie, and Josh Whedon's humor just isn't funny to me. That's the one with the... Uh, and it's all kind of forced in there. The fight on New York, right? Yeah, and the beam portal in the sky, the typical setup kind I of mean, thing. That's, and, that's I mean, cool. it was cool that they finally brought all these characters together, and i got to give them credit that they balance it, and there's some good tension going on. But a lot of times, like, there's always they always have to shoehorn this fucking scene in there where it's like, okay, everything's serious. We're building tension. We're building it, and, like, we've got to throw in a random joke here because people need to laugh now because people can't feel tension for more than two minutes. Yeah, that's like, Marvel. What? That's the, Marvel Well, movies. and that's the thing. I hate The Last Jedi for that, too. An overabundance of unnecessary bathos, which is what that is, where you're trying to alleviate – the the atmosphere with just some humor which you don't and, like a lot of the time it ruins it like you should just leave it tarantino be. is a master at it though like at the end of django unchained there's a scene where he shoots the lady and she goes flying and it's just so over the top yeah, but, but it's after all like, it's the at the end of the happened. movie yeah and it's also a thing where it's just funny when it happens but it comes out of nowhere and a lot of these, it's like, okay, you know something serious happened, so you know there's going to be a joke now. It's so formulaic. See, if anything, the best thing to do would be the whole do the whole movie seriously, and then do the last like second of the movie right before the credits, and just do something, just have something happen. Yeah. See, and that's have the set collapse right at the end of the movie. <laughs> this well. I mean, The Holy Mountain has kind of a crazy ending, but I don't want to ruin that movie for anyone because I highly suggest The Holy Mountain for anybody who's willing to uh, watch a really crazy movie. So Alex seems like he wants to skip... Uh, no, we don't... I, no, we're not going to skip, skip The Avengers. He wants to skip to The the Avengers, Iron Man 3, and Thor Dark World. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Winter so Soldier. No, I'm just kidding. No, so, just kidding. no. So Avengers... 
Avengers. It was uh, a and good here's movie. the it's a good movie. Definitely. It's a good movie. But I, I I think it gets a little blown up because it was like the first time they brought all these characters together. We've seen and this is one thing I will say. Here, I'll get flack from you real quick. I liked that one more than Winter Soldier because wow. I remember it more. Because I watched Winter Soldier and it didn't stick with me that much. I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it's kind of like a James Bond friend. movie in the Marvel Universe. He's fighting his old friend and shit like that. But, like, it's not. Yeah, but, like, you don't need a James Bond Marvel. Like, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean. Keep James Bond and James Bond. Don't start, like, fucking with Yeah, him. well. I'm just saying one of the reasons why I think I like that movie more is because it resembles a movie I like. It's true. Whereas, like, some of these other ones, I'm like, I don't really like anything that's here. Well, <laughs> and it's also, is, like, it's one of the first ones to be serious in tone. It's it's the first movie in a line of movies that they're trying to create a whole fucking universe with. A, it's like, what? I don't I should count them real quick. One, two, three, four. I could just go to where it says how many there are. It's <laughs> 23 if you count Iron Man or the new upcoming movie, uh, Far From Home. So 23. I could be wrong. I could be one or two off there. Yeah, but no, but, well, I give mean. Give or take. That's a lot of movies to coordinate in one universe. Yeah. Wow. Which, uh, credit to the writers there for that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I also got to be honest with like the Avengers movie. Like, I've never really liked Jaws Whedon much. Yeah. I, his humor always seems forced. And if you watch Justice League, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I never go into a movie like Marvel and be like, looking at the humor and shit, I kind of ignore it, because I'm like, it's stupid as fuck. It's Disney. Yeah. Any Disney humor isn't gonna be good. Like, Yeah, it's gonna be hokey, dumb. It's for kids. Yeah, you know? like, it's not gonna work. Like, yeah. Leave it to Warner Bros. for the fucking comedy. They're uh, Looney Tunes and shit. Yeah. For real, like, Although Warner Brothers owns DC and they haven't nailed comedy really with their cinematic universe so well, far. Well, the thing is, is although DC, Shazam was really good. See, the thing is, is with my my feeling with that, with the Warner Brothers and shit, is they're good at comedy. They're not good at serious. And when you get into the, the DC stuff, serious, it's more serious, which they pull it off on the games really well, like the Batman games and stuff like that. Pull yeah. it off fucking flawlessly. Oh yeah. But their movies aren't that great. But, do. like, Shazam works because there's a comedy aspect to Shazam. it. And that's what I feel. Yeah. Well, see, when you... Here's my thing. Tone is very important. If you don't know what your tone is, your movie's going to be a mess. And I feel like the Avengers and everything Joss Whedon's done are fucking tonal messes. That doesn't mean they're bad. And I'm not even saying they're bad. I'm just saying, had anybody else who's a competent director done them, they'd be better. Okay, but it was a darker type of movie then. What? That Avengers was a darker one. If you think about it. Like, visually. Oh, well, visually it looks like and, shit. But like, <laughs> like, I wouldn't I'm not say joking. that. No, no, like, their color palette is so bland like it is le like well, crayola like a pack of crayola crayons have more vibrant colors than the avengers like go back and watch that movie the like i'm not joking what they didn't do any kind of coloring with the but what i'm saying in is pose, now so they it looks do it so too flat. much now it looks way too poppy like it, it things pop way too much yeah like, they're overdoing it now. Yeah, well, Back that's why you then, should just shoot it on film and make it look good. <laughs> shoot it in film. Yeah. And it'll look good. You know? You see? <laughs> I'm advocating. Well, apparently they're back to shooting on film, though. So, well, what I hear. I don't really care. It's all digital. It's all going to be digital at the end. Film, they'll go through processing. And no, it'll no. It'll come out digital. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, with Disney, they would. It'll do that. come yeah. out. Tarantino, pivotal. when he shoots on film, he fucking shoots on film. He, but I'm, he's I'm a man specifically, to his crab, I'm specifically so. talking about Disney right yeah. now. We're talking I'm not about talking the about product. like like the guy that made uh, the uh, Coen Brothers. Like, yeah, I'm not talking about them. Yeah. They'll probably go back to film. I yeah. bet. But yeah, man. Uh, Iron Man dies in the Avengers and comes back to life, and then fucking they make what? Iron Man 3. Did you just spoil it for everybody? Sorry, if you haven't seen... Does Iron Man actually die? If you haven't seen a movie that's seven years old no, now. I, 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 I've, seen, I've seen probably just about all these, except... Um, let me see. I've seen every single one of these except for... Doctor Strange and you, Spider-Man Homecoming. You didn't see Doctor Strange? No. I know. That's a really good one, too. Okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. 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 I enjoyed that one. I thought that was one of the better ones. I mean, I'll watch them. I just was like, is it important and central to, central to like the main plot? And it's like, no. Does it? Okay. M- oh, you're one of those motherfuckers. No, okay. You're one of those motherfuckers. No, I watch, no, I see how I it watch is. good movies, I actually. See how it is. <laughs> no, um, no, compared to a lot of these, I'd consider that one of the better ones. Okay, that's cool. It's better than the fucking I'm just Hulk. saying when we get there, I'm going to give you my opinion of what I've seen. I mean, I've seen clips, and my brother was watching Doctor Strange the one time, and I saw like 30 minutes of it. It seemed competently made and the guy who did it made sinister which is one of like the best horror movies the last like 10 years it's a good movie and they don't force it as a fucking like an avengers add-on you know it's okay, actually cool. doctor strange fighting like mads mickelson the whole time you know? oh really it's yeah, mad mickelson oh it. he's like i the love main mads guy. mickelson he's a great actor that's what i'm saying you i got- still remember him in the king arthur movie you remember king arthur yeah, he plays like the yeah, silent you're guy. Right. And yeah. He's got the hawk and everything. Yeah. Oh, he's fucking great in that. Even though he's like a, a mute. Here, did you ever see um, Valhalla Rising? Yes, that's an amazing. I have movie. that. On Blue. Yeah. That's Nicholas Finding Refn, the Is guy it? who did Drive and all these other movies. I'm talking but about. But like Mad Mickelson says nothing the whole yeah, movie. But but it's it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, but it's fucking crazy. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're on the same page, Kevin. I'm yeah. Okay. All right, <laughs> All right. <laughs> but you got you got to see that one at Uh-oh. least, like Doctor Strange. You got to watch oh, that. Oh yeah, I will. And that would be a recommendation for people of that Rising. It's okay. really weird, but check it out. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we're jumping ahead here. We're giving Valhalla Rising the seal of approval from yeah. guys talking yeah. about that. Uh, Iron Man three. What do you think about that? I need to look at I it like cause... Shane Black, so I'm a little biased here. Okay. Um, did you know he's from Pennsylvania? No. Yeah, he's more Pittsburgh-oriented rather than us toward Philly. Let, let me look at but who he is. Shane Black. He Lethal did... Weapon and Lethal Weapon? Yeah, okay. he's well, he's the, he's the Jesus, Jesus got a big pussy guy from Predator. He was in Predator. Yeah, in the original Predator, he's like, yeah, he's the guy who tells the jokes, the wisecracking yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah. But he also helped with the screenplay. Okay. He helped write it. Um, yeah, it looks like he did a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did the new The Predator movie, which I, I guess I'm one of the few people who actually That's liked it. Yeah, A lot of people hated on it, and I can definitely see why, because there's some stuff in there that like kind of slaps the lore in the face. But I don't know. I just had a lot of fun with it, but... I think Jane Sane Black's funny for me. So where as Jaws Whedon was kind of, I don't think his humor is really funny, and I kind of thought it was kind of f- forced in there. Shane Black's humor kind of feels more natural and from characters. Um, if you guys have seen the Nice Guys, he did that. That's that's really good. I suggest that one. Um, but yeah, no, he did Iron Man three and. Yes, a lot of people are pissed that, yeah, oh, it's not the real Mandarin. Uh, you know, you go through the whole thing, and Ben Kingsley wasn't re- the real Mandarin. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of funny, I... though, when they show up, and he's like, I just, just put on an act. and I... <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of blanking on this movie because, like. The bad guy, I mean, when you get to the actual part where Guy Pierce is the bad guy, yeah. it, it's. It is kind of forgettable. Like it's not that great of a movie, but it's, it's just funny. been so long since I've seen this one. Like Iron Man one and two stuck with me. This one did not this stick with didn't. me. Uh, this one was the one where the people explode. I'm pretty sure. The people, yeah, the energy.
energy or something. Sort of, sort of getting there. I've definitely seen it, but it's just been <clears throat> six years since I saw it. So I, mean, I remember liking it more than Iron Man Two. I would believe that. I could see that. Oh, is that the one where um, War Machine isn't in it, and he's like trying to give it to the government the whole time, trying to? Yeah, give... I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I remember he's like I was like he's such a douchebag <laughs> trying to give the government the technology he worked on, but um yeah then after that it goes to Thor Dark World. Okay. So for the second Thor. This is probably the part where any Marvel fanboys who are still subscribed to us are unsubscribing because Thor The Dark World is one of the worst superhero movies I've ever seen. And, yes, I will stick by that comment. The, uh, the one positive – okay, I'll give it two positives. It has some good actors in it, which – Yay, your casting department did a good job. Actually, you know what? No, the people from the first movie did a good job casting them because you're just keeping the same people as the last yeah. one. So you just inherited that. So you know what? I'm taking that positive away. The only thing I like is some of the coloring of the backgrounds and stuff's kind of cool with the green glow. Yeah. The movie is painfully boring and uninteresting it's more of like nothing Loki's history you know that, and, that's and you that get one, all right? this about these elves and shit that nobody like the keepler i was like who gives a fuck about any of this well i mean you you do kind of need that i mean they could have not made a whole movie out of it but they or they should have just done it better <laughs> they needed that <laughs> aspect good. because of how like nobody like if you don't know the lore of that like you would not know that loki was not yeah, part of the family and where he came from and stuff and like it, there was a big yeah. thing about it. I just like, think they could have done a much better movie because yeah, Thor Dark World. Yeah. I mean, it, guess how it ends, guys? The beam in the fucking sky, man. It's always yeah. something, and it's uh, the, oh, well, this I mean, other device. You think about it's, like, it's oh, still the on. beginning of the Marvel. Yeah. Universe. So they're still trying to build yeah, it phase up. Phase two, there's point. still some bumps here. <laughs> although this last stretch here is pretty solid, though. Um, yeah, so then, I guess last right thoughts after about that. Thor Dark World is, I just think it, it it's such a nothing movie. Like, there's nothing about that movie that you can sit and go like, oh, well, th that was a good. Okay. No, yeah, you're right. Like no positives. Um, I would have to rewatch it to be really sure about this statement. So, guys, don't, don't tear me up too hard on this one. But uh, I don't think that that one pushed the universe forward at all other yeah, than telling like, Loki's yeah. story. Yeah. Which, <clears throat> honestly, a prediction which Loki dies in this last one, he's not as Guardian and stuff and all that, which that movie could literally be an explanation mm -hmm. that Loki didn't get killed. Yeah. Because he didn't, like, I don't know, he didn't turn the fucking ice blue that he should have, even though, like, I don't know. I don't know how it's supposed to work. I didn't write the movies. We'll see, guys. I guess we'll see, man. I'm sh My guess is that everyone that died physically is dead. Loki's dead. Uh, Gamora's dead. Um, Vision's dead. But I think everyone that got disappeared, they're all going to come back. That's my I prediction. Think That's my prediction. You think My bold prediction? Yeah. I think that Thanos is just Loki putting on a big act. Ooh. That's a good And it ties one. everything together. That would piss a lot of people off. It would. But that would make sense, too. But it wouldn't, though. Because Unless they were, like, connected. See, the thing is, is Thanos is, is such a big enemy. Like, he is yeah. one of the biggest enemies in the Marvel Universe. So... Mm. It being Loki would be kind of a stretch. I know. I, I but that would be fucking hilarious. I would. I laugh. mean, it's much better than in the comics where a Squirrel Girl defeats uh, <laughs> Thanos. Yeah, in the comics, Thanos gets beaten by Squirrel Girl, who uses her army of squirrels to defeat him. I'm not even fucking joking. <laughs> Is this a newer thing? <sighs> Because I know that the original Captain Marvel, that was his main, who was a man. Captain yeah. Marvel was originally a man. Before he gave it to his uh, 
What his wife or girlfriend? His girlfriend. Or so. yeah. uh, he gave her the abilities, and then he got cancer and died. Wow. Which I read that comic. It is actually a really good like story of him like dying, the death of Captain yeah. Marvel, and then ever since then they never brought him back or anything. They kept it as his girlfriend. Now mm. Brie Larson is being kind of a uh, feminist. <laughs> um, we'll get to that. Um, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. So, as I said already, this is m- where I feel like they had returned to like, okay, it knows exactly what it is as a movie. It is its own thing. It's not too big. It's like the right size for the kind of movie it is. Is there anything that pushes the whole um, story together, though? It lets you know that the structure of things isn't as firm as you <laughs> think in earlier entries, and it kind of breaks shield up, and it means that there's not this smoothed out thing. So it's just pushing the, the whole broad story along. It's nothing with the it, underlying I story. I mean, I'm that not going to sit know. here and tell you Captain America Winter Soldier is like a masterpiece of well, film. I'm saying, like, I'm <laughs> saying, like, the, it's first, good. the first thing with an Infinity Stone was Captain America's first movie. It had mm-hmm. the first Infinity Stone, which you didn't know at the time that that was going to be an Infinity Stone thing. Like, oh, yeah. You just like, thought it was a relic, like some power or something like that, but... Uh, I couldn't tell you when the, the second stone is introduced. Honestly, um... Yeah, I don't know. Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron has uh, Vision's stone. Yeah, which... I remember other people when they were seeing the stones, they're like, oh, that's what this stone. And like, for me, well, me, I'm like, yeah, oh, I don't know I didn't what the know heck that. this is. Read... And yeah. then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, there's this Thanos guy and he wants some stones. <laughs> like, here's my thought. Here's like, okay, so there's five stones, right? There's Captain America. There's That's the first one. There's. Thor, Captain. Oh, there's Captain America, which is the first one, and then there's uh, the Avengers has one on the uh, staff, Loki's staff that he's using. That's another one. Then there's um, could be wrong. There might be Guardians of the Galaxy has one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy has one. You're right, and then Doctor Strange has one. Yeah. And then there's Vision. Yep. There's the five. So literally the only movies you need for that is Captain America, the first Avengers, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, and the one I missed there. Well, Vision would be Vision, the, the second time. Avengers. Yeah, well, okay, so we're... Okay. But it interchanges. So we stone. We're still on... Captain America, the Winter Soldier. I think it's a it's a good ride of a film. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson. We did touch on it, so yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. He does a pretty good job. Yeah. Uh, you think he's dead at one point, and that's pretty like, whoa, that's they killed Nick Fury, and then it's like, nah. Um, it's it's an interesting little uh, adventure, and then oh, dealing with the infrastructure. I mean, it's pretty much. I guess. I, I mean, I heard a lot of people say it's basically, uh, what, Spectre, uh, yeah. James Bond, Spectre, yeah, and Ed are, like, the I same plot. That. I saw um, that. Which, it's like, eh, you know, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's it's good. All right. I think it's better than a lot of these yeah. early entries. Well, moving on from there, I'd say your your movie that you liked was that one a lot. After the first Iron Man, I'm guessing. I'd say I would push it back one and say that I mean, Guardians, Guardians, of, the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy I mean, was probably the first one that I had fun with after the original Iron Man. Oh, okay. That was like the first one where I was like, this is pretty good. It got some like... No, I really liked Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. No, see, I like Guardians of the Galaxy quite a bit more than Winter Soldier. Yeah. I was just like, Winter Soldier was like... Oh, that was they the first can, acceptable they can one. Ma- yeah. yeah, it's like oh, they can make movies. Mm-hmm. And then Guardians of the Galaxy was like, oh shit! <laughs> I was like, this was really good. It they got like, Sylvester re- Stallone. <laughs> yeah, it was actually really funny. Yeah. It was a good ride of a film. Uh, very interesting. Chris Pratt's good. I mean, the whole cast. Yeah, yeah. They had Bradley Cooper as the raccoon. Yeah, the raccoon. Uh, 
Dave Batista. Yeah, Dave Batista. Goes over my head. Yeah, that, that, he's fucking hilarious. And um, Gamora. Yeah, Gamora. I don't know the. Actress. You have it on the internet, man. Jeez, let me click on it, man. Wastes my loading time. Oh. It is Zoe Sal- Saldana. Yeah. I knew that, but I just... And Finn Diesel saying, Groot. Yeah. I am Groot. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Imagine getting paid for that, right? Oh, All you yeah. gotta say is, I am Groot. It's probably yeah. the and James paid. Gunn directed that, and he also uh, helped write it. Yeah, and uh, there was a big controversy with him recently, which I won't go into that much, but he is back to... Shooting the new Guardians 3, yeah. So Which is going to be interesting because, uh, you know, yeah. you know what happened in the last Avenger. Uh, and yeah, then we have uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Yeah, I did not like this at no, all. No, yeah, like, yeah, I feel like, the same all right, way. Like, all right, the movie itself would have been great, but, um... Nothing against the actor. Nothing against the actor at all because he's a good actor who I am blanking on right now. Give what? me a second. The voice of the robot? The voice of With the robot. James Bader? James. Yeah. Uh, is that who it is? Yeah, James Bader's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a really good actor. He's good in the blacklist. Really good actor, yeah. I mean, like, he's. He can pull a lot of stuff off, but, like, he was so fucking annoying as Ultron. I think the character was written terribly. All the dialogue was just so bad. It was joke. It was a oh, joke. Yeah. The whole like, time. Wasn't it supposed to be, like, Jarvis and something like that? Jarvis's yeah. thing got in- yeah. installed into a... Like, infected or... Yeah. Got infected by the... Yeah. yeah. Well, what's really funny to me is, like... Then they created Vision and he killed him immediately. Compare, <laughs> compare Hal 9000 to Ultron. Which one's more intimidating? Ultron's not intimidating at all. Meanwhile, the other one kills the entire... Uh, uh, like, heartlessly right, wait, kills the whole crew. Wait, wait. You're right. He is like that, right? So Hal is intimidating in general because he's like so like calm about it and shit. Mm-hmm. But Ultron's still intimidating. But, like, you would not take him seriously. He'd be yeah. walking towards you, would be like, oh, shit, and he'd be like, I'ma kill you. Like, <laughs> you know, it'd just be, like, stupid fucking quips that are, like, not... Hey there, everyone, smooth jazz. This time, guys talk about stuff. It's Alex and... And me, Kevin. <laughs> and me, Kevin. Yeah. McKevin. The artist, the artist known as me. Yeah, McKevin. And Change today we're going to talk about the most jazz topic of all time. The Marvel, Marvel Cinematic, Cinematic Universe. <laughs> um, oh, God. So, Marvel. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I think a great place to start is... Uh, Where it all began? I think we should... I, I feel like yeah, rather than yeah. doing just overall Marvel, we could do that another time. I think Marvel... The, the movies to so kind of do it like a, oh yeah yeah we're doing the Marvel Cinematic so we're talking about like the the main sure. stuff Disney's. but I want to even talk about some of the ones beforehand like Dolph Lundgren's Punisher Nick Fury with David Hasselhoff uh, oh, all I those never, terrible I didn't Captain see America that movies one. I didn't see that Punisher it was Punisher, Electra Punisher War Zone oh okay so see I saw the one before that. Which was actually kind of good. I liked the one before. The, with Thomas Jane. Yeah, that, that one. And John with John Travolta. Travolta. The bad <laughs> yeah. guy. It, it's an enjoyable watch. I'll put it at that. That's the one thing you'll hear with us talking about some of these movies. Some of these movies just purely and simply are just defined as watchable. Mm-hmm. And I can't say anything nicer or worse than that. It's just. You know, it's, it's it's a watchable movie. You can it's it's watchable. It's just don't yeah. ever think it. You know. Yeah, it's it's like it's only one way to put it. Yeah. Well, the Marvel Cinematic Universe 
starts. It all starts with Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah, uh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> debuted the whole fucking universe, which was the Ozzy Osbourne classic in the life. <laughs> For real, yeah. Yeah, well, it's interesting, though, because, yeah, Black Sabbath, no, Ozzy liked the, the comic books of Iron Man, so he's like, I'm going to make a song about it. Mm-hmm. And then they made a song about it, and uh, Black Sabbath, yeah, Iron Man. It's, I mean, that's pretty cool. And they even played the song in the credits of that one. I like the first Iron Man. I'm going to, I always had a blast with that one. I... For yeah, I mean, a while, I always thought that was the best Marvel movie. It starts off with a really strong cast. I mean, it has... Jeff Bridges Jeff is Bridges, great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's great in everything. And Robert Downey Jr. is great. Yeah. Um, he's... I mean, he's... I Let me put it this way. He's been, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, there's a lot of times where it's like, ah, do I really want to see this? Oh, Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in... Ah, he's going to bring his A game. He'll be good. They yeah. just... they Like, it's cool how they... They picked the perfect actor to start it with because he's like the strongest act out of all of them, probably. I mean, maybe not anymore, but I mean, they're all they're all like Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. is in it now. So like, yeah, acting wise, they're getting leveled out with with the people that are in it. But like, he was the longest like heavy puller there. Oh, yeah, for a while, like, it was like, who, who the hell are these other people? Yeah. It's like Robert Downey Jr. It's like, but then you sit there, and it's like, what movie do you remember Robert Downey Jr. from? Like, he he has name recognition, but outside of playing Iron Man, well, you remember him what? From being in Back to School, which is a Rodney Dangerfield 80s mm-hmm. college movie, which is way funnier than it deserves to be. <laughs> because, because everybody, anyway. Yeah. But, um... And then you have uh, him playing Charlie Chaplin in the 90s. It's like outside of that, what, what do you remember him from? And I'm sure people could come up with some different things. And he's been in other stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, but that definitely put him on the map for sure. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like Leonardo DiCaprio sign on. I mean, but, um, yeah. there was uh, Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if that was before or after that. I think it was after, right? Yeah, Sherlock Holmes was after the first Iron Man. And I do enjoy those, although I like the first one more than the second one. Oh, yeah, so. He's, Jude Law's also good, too, so. Oh, yeah. So we also suggest the Sherlock Holmes films. Yeah. <laughs> totally unrelated. They're, they're actually, no, they are Marvel, right? <laughs> <It's Yeah. laughs> then the Everything next movie Marvel. that came out was um, The Incredible Hulk with mm. Edward Norton as as Bruce Banner. Okay. That would have been awesome if he continued as that character. Not not discrediting uh, Mark Ruffalo or anything. I love Edward Norton as an actor. Yeah, he's I mean, he's Fight amazing. Club is one of my favorite movies. He's fantastic. Uh, there's I, one movie where he's like a serial killer or something like that. He gets put in jail. Oh, uh, Primal Fear. That one, yeah. That yep. one's a really good and movie. And I also like him in Moonrise Kingdom, which is completely different. It's a Wes Anderson uh, adventure comedy. Oh, yeah? Um, but, you know, Edward Norton, he's always really good. And honestly, that's the one thing I can say about the, what, 2009 Incredible 2000, Hulk movie? 2008. Okay, 2008 I, uh, Incredible Hulk is that uh, it... it <sighs> It tried. There's yeah, some things yeah. it tried. It, it definitely wasn't like a uh, great... Tim Roth's the bad guy, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, let me... Uh... He, abomination, but like... Yeah, it is Tim Roth, who who also is in a lot of really good movies. Oh, yeah, he's, he, he's I, in I really a lot like, of great Tarantino yeah. movies. <laughs> Even just look at the Tarantino movies he's been in. Hateful Eight, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, I mean... Just right there, you could just go, holy crap. Liv Tyler was in it, too. Yeah. Uh, it was just so f- forgettable, was, if I could put anything it on it. It wasn't a great movie. Because I could not tell you the plot of that movie, if you It wasn't a right great now. movie. I can remember parts. I never watched... Uh, I, I think I watched it all the way through once. Yeah. But, yeah, but... I mean, Edward Norton's great and all that. I never thought of it being connected to the Marvel Universe, cinematic universe, in the way that it is. Because it's 
It is. That Edward Morton movie, believe it or not, is part of the same universe that Robert Downey Jr. is and stuff. They just switched the actor to Mark Ruffalo because Edward Norton didn't want to be Bruce Banner. He also wanted too much money to do it. Yeah. I heard that he didn't like the character. Well, that's why he wanted more money. Oh, yeah. He's that's like, I hate it. this job, but I'll do it for money. Yeah. Which, I guess all of us can say that about our job sometimes. That's so true, yeah. Can't take anything away from the man. <laughs> Moving on from there, I guess we should move to Iron Man 2, which came out 2010. Yeah, Iron Man 2. It, How do you feel it, about Iron Man 2? It, it is kind of just more of the same of Iron Man 1. I wouldn't even say that. But it's not that. on the same level. Iron Man 1 was something special, right? Yeah. But Iron Man 2, like... Don't get me wrong, Don Cheadle's a good actor and stuff. I just didn't like the two Iron Man aspect of it or something like that. They could have fell more into Iron Man being Iron Man type thing, and he's the guy, but, like, they needed a sidekick. Like, I don't know if that was, like, some... Some power play move or something like that just to get other characters in there. I know that War Zone or War Machine. War Machine. I know that he is. <laughs> no, Punisher War Zone's a different movie. Yeah, I know that he's <laughs> like a. He's. I never remembered him in the comics. So, I mean, I didn't read a lot of Marvel comics and stuff. Well, but, see, like, when you he, when you talk about Iron Man, you don't talk about Iron Man and War Zone. You talk about. I mean, or War, War, War Machine, sorry. War Machine. Yeah, War Machine. No, I, in the old Iron Man cartoon show, which I don't re- know if you remember that show, um, it was pretty – I had fun with that as a kid, but um, he uh, he would have War Machine around sometimes, and he'd have like some other kind of like sidekicky kind of characters mm-hmm. around. But It's like when he needed help, he just yeah, – Yeah, but uh, – See, it also came out around the time the X Men cartoon show came out, so they kind of that want, one was pretty. That good. one was pretty good. Yeah. Um, and also the Spider Man one came out, but Spider Man always stayed to Spider Man, which was smart. Yeah, I like small that one scale. Too. That see, really and here's good. here's where my biggest problem with Marvel comes up, and like the worst DC movies scale. And here's the thing: if you watch the first X Men movie. Scale wise, it's not that big of a movie. It's a pretty small scale movie. There's some big scenes in it, but the movie is very human. It's down to earth, and it's about these characters. That's one first. of my favorite it's ones. It's grounding, the yeah. Movie, yeah. Uh, it's grounding. It's intense, and it's in a small scale. Yeah, really it's, simple. Like, it's not yeah. canon in the sky, certain doom for the whole world because. Unless you fucking nail that, it's the dumbest premise ever. It's the kind of thing, like, I'd expect from, like, Roger Corman's crumpled scripts in the 70s, like, invasion film. Or, well, probably I would say, like, 50s. Because in the 50s, there were always been, like, alien invasion. Here's the invasion. It's coming to the end of the world. But those always had their own vibe to it. Some of these Marvel movies, like some of them are f- are really good, yeah. And then some of them, I think, are less than stellar. First Iron Man movie gets a, a really good grade for me. I'd say really, really solid. Incredible Hulk, it's there. See, it's okay. See, at the time of that, it you didn't feel like they were building up a universe. See, yeah, you, like you didn't think anything of it. It's only when you get to like. Iron Man 2 and, like, Nick Fury and all this stuff. It's like, wait, what? And then well, all of a sudden well, they, like, they We won't get there yet, but there's right after this, there's Thor, then Captain America. Then you start to feel that they're starting to build something yeah. there. But Iron Man 2, the, the Mickey Rourke, he's a great actor, yeah, but, but the, the... I don't know who, like, whoever wrote the script or, like, just that character did not fit him well... Yeah, and no, Iron like, Man 2. I, the enemy in it, I didn't really like that much. Yeah, I just remember the movie being kind of bland. And my biggest my biggest fault with the movie is they advertised over and over ACDC soundtrack, ACDC soundtrack, mm-hmm. ACDC music. Oh, it's going to be ACDC, 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 this, that, and the other thing. So I, I was fucking pumped. Mm-hmm. I'm like, holy shit. 
It's going to be ACDC all up and down. They played three ACDC songs, and the rest was the most... And I hate to say this, because I love orchestra music. But a lot of the orchestra music in these Marvel movies I find very boring, yeah. uninspired, and it's just Well, they just were there. just getting started with that. Yeah. But Phase the one th- Marvel's really rough. Think about that, though. How many songs have... How many movies have three ACDC songs? Oh, not many because they're expensive. Exactly. Right? So so. Be, yeah, and that is a good amount yeah, of ACDC. And I mean, cool, and 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 it was pretty cool when those scenes happen, but the movie was kind of lackluster because it was like, in the first one, you're compelled because Jeff Bridges is a fucking amazing yeah, actor, yeah. and you can give him a script about being a guy who goes bowling uh, with his friends and then gets caught up in something bigger than it. Yes, yes, that is the back. Big Lebowski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do know that, but it, the movie at, at its – I mean, that movie at its core is a movie about bowling and getting caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time. And trying to get your rug back. Yeah. Circumstances going a little fucked up. It's a simple movie, mm-hmm. but it's fucking awesome because of how funny it is and how well the act. It's just so well done, and that's the thing. Iron Man two kind of feels bloated, like it's trying to be bigger than the first one, and that is kind of a problem with some of these Marvel movies. They try being way too big for their concepts. Yeah, like when we get to it, Ant Man. I think at least they acknowledge that it should be small scale because the character's fucking small scale. Yeah, yeah. And they do it right because of that. Yeah. And but just like looking here at like Iron Man two, Marvel really doesn't have their footing yet because these first few man, this Thor, but think the, about the amount of Dutch angles yeah. and Thor. We'll leave the man. Thor now, oh. but like, but think think about this. You get Iron Man one. You got Jeff Bridges. You got Robert Downey Robert Jr. Downey Jr. Oh, there's and a, uh, there's a couple well, other and, actors uh, in there. The Pepper. Uh, yeah, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, so it's a and he- then you got the Hulk there. with Tim Roth and Edward it, Norton. Yeah, you got. Then you got the next Iron Man with Mickey Rourke in there. Don Cheadle. You got these really A list actors, and then you go to Thor, and you get Anthony Hopkins. You get uh, Natalie Idris Portman. Il- uh, the- Idris Elba. Yeah, Idris Elba. Natalie Portman. You got Natalie Portman. Uh, you got um. Uh, the, the Loki, Norwegian, the Norwegian guy, Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> no, uh, he's an amazing actor. He's, he's Danish. He's Danish. Though. Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. Okay. And I know that because him and Nicholas Vinding Refn do a lot of stuff together because they're both from Denmark. Yeah, you got um, uh, Tom. You no, got the, Tom, the Norwegian guy. He scrolled to the old Norwegian. Tom Hiddleston. The, 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 <laughs> Norwegian Nick Nolte. <laughs> Wait, let me. Uh, I'll find it before. Stellan Skarsgård. Skarsgård, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think he, he, his kids, his one kid is the Pennywise from uh, the oh, yeah? Ed movies. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and you got Tom Hiddleston and yeah. uh, Chris Hemsworth, which I, I don't know what they were in before this. Honestly, Chris Hemsworth before that he was in Star Trek as Captain Kirk's dad. That was who, before this. Yeah. Okay, that could have worked. Says something really good there. They could have like really. I think they might do something more with him in the next Star Trek, or they were going to. I don't know what's going on with the next Star Trek. I guess it's not going to happen. But we're not on the Star Treks. We're on the Marvels. Yeah, fucking um, Thor. So it gets you into Asgard, which is pretty crazy. Like, the CGI in that movie is pretty good. And then that shoots him back to Earth real quick, and he's on Earth the whole time. Thor's kind of cheesy, man. What the movie? Yeah, or, or not the, the not the Norse myth. The character. Oh yeah, it's totally cheesy. The movie is really cheesy. the whole movie is really cheesy. But but I mean, as a thought process, it's a fucking cool movie because it's, it's Thor. Yeah, it's I, it falls under that it's decent category. It's just the amount of Dutch angles in that movie. It's like what? Did somebody watch Battlefield of the Earth and get us the worst ideas? They're yeah. like, Battlefield Earth was really good. What are you talking about? It had horrible effects and tons of Dutch angles, just like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay. Not well, much to talk about there. Um, yeah, yeah. Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh did uh, Thor, really? In Thor? He directed. Wow. Wait, he directed it? It looks like, yeah. Ooh. 
Oh yeah, he did. That's crazy! Wow. And if I'm here. I'm here Kenneth, shedding on the first. If you Thor don't movie, know who like... Kenneth Branagh is, it's the the teacher from Harry Potter yeah, from Harry too. Po- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he also his Henry the Fifth is really good. He made a, a Hamlet. Oh yeah, Bello. he's he's really he's, he's an made a lot, and actor. he's a great actor. Yeah, too. he's an amazing uh, actor. Yeah. Um. I take back everything I said. It's the best movie. Uh, it's the best Marvel movie. Thor's the best. <laughs> I didn't think it was a, that bad of a movie. I thought it was a good. Movie. No, I I would always say like it's fine, yeah. but like it's always crazy when you check out the Marvel movies on Rotten Tomatoes. All of them have like these sparkling reviews, and it's like they're not perfect. Now it also comes down to a lot of Marvel movies are fine. But if everybody says they're fine and they give that as a positive, Rotten Tomatoes is going to be like, wow, it's got great scores. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're not taking the average score. So a lot of these, you check them on IMDb and they're like a 6.6 or a 6.8 or something where they're like, okay, so it's a fine movie. But nobody's like, whoa, Iron Man 2, man. That's where they got it right. (laughs) You know, Thor doesn't really start it yet. Doesn't like start initiate the whole thing yet, but the next movie I feel does. You Captain America, Captain America, the first See, Avenger. I mean, it is I in like the, the name. Fir- okay, so here's the thing about Captain America, first Avenger. I really like the first half of this movie. Which you're right. And yeah. as soon as he gets powers, the movie goes downhill for me because a lot of the CGI stuff's really fucking hokey. And like the leg movement the looked like the movie, noodles. Like the first boom, half boom, of the boom, movie boom. is CGI with him, though. It's a big but ass it, head it looked, on a little body on a on a smaller dude. Yeah, it, no, that was good. But I'm just saying some of the other stuff. Good. Like that looked weird. Uh, he, his movements are very noodly. Like they don't limbs do not move the way they move on Captain America in the first Avenger. They advance it a little in hand. Yeah, and bit, well yeah. it just looks so fucking dumb to me. So like I've, I have I remember it coming time. out of the theater of that like I had some fun but like some of that was dumb as shit. And and, and I that's kind of have been how I feel about some of these where like I yeah, I'm not a big fan of them just going fuck it, do it in post. We're going to just CGI it. Fuck it. Yeah, that's you know. probably what they were doing. And, and to me, I, I pretty much always prefer practical. Like, if you could do it in camera or some other way, do it that way because it's always going to look better than CGI. Because I've never saw something in CGI and been like, wow, I'm so glad they didn't try to find another way to do this. And I do think there's a way to do an amazing balance. I think a great example is, and from around this time too, Prometheus, you want to talk about like special effects and stuff? Prometheus, when it uses CGI, it uses it where it absolutely has to, and it still looks better than any other CGI I've ever seen. Ridley Scott just has such a great eye that it always looks good, and I'm like, how does... And I've never understood that, where like Ridley Scott's $90 million budgeted Prometheus looks 10,000 times better than Marvel's two hundred and fifty million dollar budgeted films, I just—it's like what Marvel's Korean animators aren't that good. Like, what's, what's going on here, man? Like, I don't know. In don't light know. of all that, it does start the the whole uh, Infinity Stone aspect. Chase, when when the... is that Infinity Stone thing start? Is that with Avengers or? I was just—that's what I just said. Captain America. Well, that's not Avengers, though. It's the first Avenger. I just it, hit the microphone, paying. and we just spiked the thing. You are not paying attention. I am paying attention. I'm also reading. So in Captain America, the first Avenger. But it's not the Avengers, though. No, I'm joking. They have you. the first Infinity Stone in that, and that's how... Uh, Red Skull became Red Skull. He touched the yeah. the stone and it made him. Although, this is the most insane thing I ever seen. The Marvel Cinematic Universe did not have a movie come out in two thousand nine. Whoa, like that's unheard of nowadays. When like eighteen Marvel movies come out a year. Yeah, <laughs> like, I knew I noticed that when I was looking at the dates on these. Should have been <laughs> labeling the dates. Captain America two thousand eleven. Yeah, yeah, Thor and Cap Thor, you film Thor, but Thor and Captain America were both twenty eleven. Um, but 
Alex seems an- anxious to move on to his well, no, favorite oh, movie oh, here, <laughs> the first okay, Avengers no, movie. Okay, this, this is where we're going to lose he's subscribers. Real, he's a little um, antsy here because... Uh, here's the thing. He doesn't believe it started right before that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me say this. I like the first Iron Man movie. And then the next Marvel movie that I would say I l- like legitimately really like is Captain America the Winter Soldier <laughs> six years later. So, yes, I'm going to take some flack for this, but I don't think The Avengers is that good of a movie. I think it's okay. I think it's a little bit better than Captain America First Avenger, Thor, Iron Man 2, and Incredible Hulk, but I think Iron Man's better than Avengers. Because Avengers tries to be this huge movie, and Josh Whedon's humor just isn't funny to me. That's the one with the... Uh, and it's all kind of forced in there. The fight on New York, right? Yeah, and the beam portal in the sky, the typical setup kind I of mean, thing. That's, and, that's I mean, cool. it was cool that they finally brought all these characters together, and i got to give them credit that they balance it, and there's some good tension going on. But a lot of times, like... There's always they always have to shoehorn this fucking scene in there where it's like, okay, everything's serious. We're building tension. We're building it. And like, we're got to throw in a random joke here because people need to laugh now because people can't feel tension for more than two minutes. Yeah, that's like, Marvel. What? That's Marvel. Well, movies. and that's the thing. I hate The Last Jedi for that, too. An overabundance of unnecessary bathos, which is what that is, where you're trying to alleviate the the atmosphere with just some humor which you don't and, like a lot of the time it ruins it like you should just leave it tarantino be. is a master at it though like at the end of django unchained there's a scene where he shoots the lady and she goes flying and it's just so over the top yeah, but, but it's after all like, it's at the end of the happened. movie yeah and it's also a thing where it's just funny when it happens but it comes out of nowhere and a lot of these, it's like, okay, you know something serious happened, so you know there's going to be a joke now. It's so formulaic. See, if anything, the best thing to do would be the whole do the whole movie seriously, and then do the last like second of the movie right before the credits, and just do something, just have something happen. Yeah. See, and that's have the set collapse right at the end of the movie. <laughs> this well. I mean, the Holy Mountain has kind of a crazy ending, but I don't want to ruin that movie for anyone because I highly suggest the Holy Mountain for anybody who's willing to uh, watch a really crazy movie. So Alex seems like he wants to skip. Uh, no, we don't. I, no, we're not going to skip, skip the Avengers. He wants to skip to the the Avengers, Iron Man three, and Thor: Dark World. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Winter so Avengers. Soldier. No, I'm just kidding. No, so just kidding. no, so Avengers. Avengers. It was uh, a and good here's movie. the it's a good movie. Definitely. It's a good movie. But I, I I think it gets a little blown up because it was like the first time they brought all these characters together. We've seen and, and this is one thing I will say. Here, I'll get flack from you real quick. I liked that one more than Winter Soldier because wow. I remember it more. Because I watched Winter Soldier and it didn't stick with me that much. I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it's kind of like a James Bond friend. movie in the Marvel universe, He's fighting his old friend and shit like that. But like, it's not. Yeah, but like, you don't need a James Bond Marvel. Like, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, keep James Bond and James Bond. Don't start like fucking. Like, yeah. Well, I'm just saying one of the reasons why I think I like that movie more is because it resembles a movie I like. It's true. Whereas, like, some of these other ones, I'm like, I don't really like anything that's here. <laughs> well, and it's also, is, like, it's one of the first ones to be serious in tone. It's it's the first movie in a line of movies that they're trying to create a whole fucking universe with. It. It's like, what? I don't know. I should count them real quick. One, two, three, four. Five, I could just go to where it says how many there are. <laughs> It's 23 if you count Iron Man or the new upcoming movie uh, Far From Home. So 23. I could be wrong. I could be one or two off. There, yeah, but no, but well, I mean. Give or take. That's a lot of movies to coordinate in one universe. Yeah. Wow. Well. Which. Uh, Credit to the writers there for that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I also got to be honest with like the Avengers movie. Like, I've never really liked Jaws Whedon much. Yeah, I 
his humor always seems forced. And if you watch Justice League, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I never go into a movie like Marvel and be like looking at the humor and shit. I kind of ignore it because I'm like, it's stupid as fuck. It's Disney. Yeah. Any Disney humor isn't going to be good. Like, Yeah, it's going to be hokey, dumb, it, for kids. Yeah, you know? like, it's not going to work. Like, <laughs> leave it to Warner Bros. for the fucking comedy. They're uh, Looney Tunes and shit. Yeah. For real, like... Although Warner Brothers owns DC and they haven't nailed comedy really with their cinematic universe so well, far. Well, the thing is, is although DC, Shazam was really good. See, the thing is, is with my my feeling with that with the Warner Brothers and shit is they're good at comedy. They're not good at serious. And when you get into the, the DC stuff, serious, it's more serious. Which they pull it off on the games really well, like the Batman games and stuff like that. Yeah. Pull it off fucking flawlessly. Oh yeah. But their movies aren't that great. But, like, Shazam works because there's a comedy aspect to it. That's what I feel. Yeah. Well, see, when you... Here's my thing. Tone is very important. If you don't know what your tone is, your movie's going to be a mess. And I feel like the Avengers and everything Joss Whedon's done are fucking tonal messes. That doesn't mean they're bad. And I'm not even saying they're bad. I'm just saying, had anybody else who's a competent director done them, they'd be better. Okay, but it was a darker type of movie then. That Avengers was a darker one, if you think about it. Like, visually. Oh, well, visually it looks like shit. I wouldn't say that. No, like, their color palette is so bland. Like it is le- like well, that's crayola, like a pack of Crayola crayons have more vibrant colors than the Avengers. Like go back and watch that movie. The, like I'm not joking. What they didn't do any kind of coloring with the. But what I'm saying in, is in post, now so they it do so it flat. too much. Now it looks way too poppy. Like it, it things pop way too much. Yeah. Like, they're overdoing it now. Yeah, well, that's why you should just shoot it on film and make it look good. (laughs) Shoot it in film. Yeah. And it'll look good, you know? You see? (laughs) I'm advocating. Well, apparently they're back to shooting on film, though, Well, what I hear. I don't really care. It's all digital. It's all going to be digital at the end. Film, they'll go through processing. No, no. It'll come out digital. (laughs) Well, yeah, with Disney, they would do It'll that. come yeah. out. Tarantino, digital. when he shoots on film, he fucking shoots on film. He, but I'm, he's I'm a man specifically, dedicated to his craft, I'm specifically so. talking about Disney right yeah. now. We're talking We're not about, talking about like, like the guy that made uh, the uh, Coen brothers. Like, yeah, I'm not talking about them. Yeah. They'll probably go back to film, I yeah. bet. But yeah, man. Uh, Iron Man dies in the Avengers and comes back to life, and then fucking they make what? Iron Man three. Did you just spoil it for everybody? Sorry, if you haven't seen. Does Iron Man actually die? If you haven't seen a movie that's seven years old. No, now. I, I, I've seen. I've seen probably just about all these except. Um, let me see. I've seen every single one of these except for. Doctor Strange and you, Spider-Man Homecoming. You didn't see Doctor Strange? No. I know. That's a really good one, too. Okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. okay. I enjoyed that one. I thought that was one of the better ones. I mean, I'll watch them. I just was like, is it important and central, central to like the main plot? And it's like, no. Does it? Okay. M- oh, you're one of those motherfuckers. No, okay. You're one of those motherfuckers. No, I watch, no, I see how it I is. watch good movies, I actually. See how it is. <laughs> no. Um, no, compared to a lot of these, I'd consider that one of the better ones. Okay, that's cool. It's better than the fucking I'm just Hulk. saying when we get there, I'm going to give you my opinion of what I've seen. I mean, I've seen clips, and my brother was watching Doctor Strange the one time, and I saw like 30 minutes of it. It seemed competently made and the guy who did it made sinister which is one of like the best horror movies the last like 10 years it's a good movie and they don't force it as a fucking like an avengers add-on you know it's okay, actually cool. doctor strange it's fighting like mads mickelson the whole time you know? oh really yeah, it's mad mads mickelson oh in. He's like i the love mads guy. mickelson he's a great actor that's what i'm saying you i got- still remember him in the king arthur movie you remember king arthur 
Yeah, he plays like the yeah, silent you're guy. Right. He's yeah. got the hawk and everything. Yeah. Oh, he's fucking great in that, even though he's like a, a mute. Here, did you ever see um, Valhalla Rising? Yes. That's an amazing movie. I have movie. that on Blue. Yeah. That's Nicholas Finding Refn, the Is guy it? who did Drive and all these other movies I'm talking but about. But, like, Mad Mickelson says nothing the whole movie. Yeah, but, but it's, it's fucking amazing. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're on the same page, Kevin. I'm, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. But you got you to gotta see that one, at least. Oh. Like, Doctor Strange. You got to watch oh, that. Oh, yeah, I will. And... That would be a recommendation for people of Al Rising. It's okay. really weird, but check it out. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, We're jumping ahead here. We're giving Valhalla Rising the seal of approval from yeah, guys like yeah. Uh Iron Man 3. What do you think about that? I need to look at I it. I like cause... Shane Black, so I'm a little biased here. Okay. Um, did you know he's from Pennsylvania? No. Yeah, he's more Pittsburgh oriented rather than us toward Philly. Let, let me look at but who he is. Shane Black. He Lethal did Lethal Weapon and Lethal Weapon. Yeah, team? he's okay. well, he's the he's the Jesus Jesus got a big pussy guy from Predator. He was in Predator. Yeah, in the original Predator, he's like, yeah, he's the guy who tells the jokes, the wisecracking yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah. But he also helped with the screenplay. Okay. He helped write it. Um. Yeah, it looks like he did a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did the new The Predator movie, which I, I guess I'm one of the few people who actually That's liked not, it. Yeah. A lot of people hated on it, and I can definitely see why, because there's some stuff in there that like kind of slaps the lore in the face. But I don't know. I just had a lot of fun with it. But I think Jane, Sane Black's funny for me. So where as Jaws Whedon was kind of, I don't think his humor is really funny, and I kind of thought it was kind of forced in there shane black's humor kind of feels more natural and from characters um if you guys have seen the nice guys he did that that's that's really good i suggest that one um but yeah no he did iron man 3 and yes a lot of people are pissed that yeah oh it's not the real mandarin uh you know, you go through the whole thing, and Ben Kingsley wasn't re- the real Mandarin. Yeah. But it was kind of funny, though, I... when they show up, and he's like, I just, just 